When I was a young boy, I'd say probably first, second grade, somewhere around there, I was a big fan of The Muppet Show. I know that's hard to believe. And it aired on the local PBS station, Channel 9. Watched it every night, 7.30. Loved The Muppet Show. And then one day, The Muppet Show got removed from PBS Channel 9. I was very, very disappointed. And you know what else? All of the other kids in my class were also very disappointed. And so we actually all got together. We all wrote letters to the local PBS affiliate. And we begged them to bring back The Muppet Show. And uh, they did. They brought it back because of our our letter-writing campaign to the local PBS station. Oh, man, I bet you some teachers got some shine out of that deal on the news. Must have loved that. Now, I bring this up because of this from the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. I have never heard of anything like this before. What's that? The TNA Wrestling roster is looking to find a path forward following Scott Demore's departure from the company. Members of the TNA roster publicly voiced their support for Damore on social media after the announcement. Today, Fightful published a letter that members of the roster sent to Anthem Sports and Entertainment CEO Leonard Asper and Damore. In the letter, the TNA wrestlers expressed their belief that TNA or that Damore is still the best possible person to protect TNA's present and future. Oh, wait, hold on, Brian. Let me actually read it here because it says it's time to play the music. It's time to light the lights. It's time oh, to meet the Oh, stop that. Oh. We feel strongly, the letter said, that a wrestling person, in quotes, needs to be intimately involved at a high level to ensure the amazing company we have all built and product we have provided to our fans continues to grow and flourish. It is our opinion that the best possible person for that role was, is, and will be Scott. They have arranged a letter-writing campaign to (laughs) Anthem to bring back Scott Demore. Bros, has that ever happened in wrestling? I hope hope this is 4D chess. This is the greatest booking ever. (laughs) I've been around a long time, and I've seen a lot, okay? I can't ever remember... Like the head booker of a company being ousted, and the roster all got together to do a letter writing campaign <laughs> to ownership to please bring this person back. Has it happened? That tells them? you, by the way, about what they thought of Scott Demore. Yeah. Has it happened in some form in Japan with a group at some point or another to any varying degree? I don't know. I I would have to go back and look that up. But, yeah, I mean, this is just a business decision that was made by Anthem that is not very good. And they have gone about it in the worst of ways because they misrepresented it to the talent. And how do you lose all of the faith? You get rid of somebody who's there because, essentially... You can't work with them anymore because you're kind of tired of telling him you're not going to spend any more money and you're not going to do any more. And he goes and leaves and you misrepresent why he left to the talent. And then you're in this situation where, again, you find out maybe if you're a talent, you didn't know that Demore had offered to buy the company, which really drives you nuts. I mean, look at the response that this has gotten. This may be a Rossi Ogawa situation if Scott Demore can actually somehow land a TV channel or a TV deal of some kind anywhere in the world that, you know, <laughs> maybe the wrestlers start going over and join him as opposed to sticking around with Anthem because what are you getting out of Anthem besides a lot of co- Cuts. A lot of cuts were made at the end of last year. A lot of people forget about this. That gets wiped away in the fact that they've had a good start to the year and creatively they've been doing well. They were slicing that thing to the bone at the end of the year with people not resigning and them not resigning people. So this whole deal with Demore is a, a bad deal, but it's all a business deal and it all lies at the feet of Anthem. Not only for Demore, but for Ed Nordholm too, who apparently was at least trying to do something to rally up the company and try 
trying to get them to spend money and okaying that sort of thing. He's out of the job now, too. This is a rough road right now for Anthem. We remain steadfast and hopeful that this letter can be a first step to opening and keeping open productive lines of communication to ensure the TNA Impact family continues to be a wonderful, unique place to work for years to come. We ask and implore you both to come together and create a resolution that will reunite this family once again. Well, if they wrote that letter to uh, Leonard Asper, well, that ain't going to help much. We have to write another letter here. Can I ask you a question? What kind of great PBS donor did you have that was able to get a network show like The Muppet Show aired on your local PBS affiliate and reruns? I don't know, brother. I don't know how the whole thing. I'm going to ask my mom what happened because she'd remember better than me. I can't even remember five years ago, much less 1982, but it definitely happened. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Right, now there's a mystery I have to solve. All right. Go to the Seattle Times archive here. Yes, of course I agree. God. No, I, what I, are you looking for here exactly? What happened with that Muppet show? On PBS? I'm asking my, uh, my mother as well. I just don't remember it being on, and I had, that was in D.C. Oh, so God, I, I got to go through 401 records? Uh, maybe uh. it was. I don't know. I remember, like, 321 Contact and the Electric Company and all that sort of stuff. Rita yeah. Moreno had a big crush on as a little kid because of the Electric Company reruns. This Very might, good. This might be a while. Anyway, well, we yeah. got more we got to talk about here. More Muppets? Cool. I'm actually great with that. Let's talk about the history of Fozzie. Not the band. Not the band. The bear. The bear. Actually, you know what the hell with it. Let's Actually, no, it's not the, the Muppets. It's not the Muppets, but, um, you know, also when I was a kid, I'll tell you how old I am, everybody. You know, it's a slow oh. news day when I'm telling you how old I am. How old are you? I'm so dang old that I remember when McDonald's play places were outside. Yeah. Not inside. Oh, man, they used to give you the glasses? Do you remember the glasses from the Muppet Show? They had a McDonald's play place oh. near Highway 99 in Linwood. I don't know why the hell we went all the way out there, but it was a big old play place. Your family was on the land. Actually, they had another one. Uh, they had another one, now I'm thinking about it, in Kenmore. And, uh, you know, it's funny, is, is my daughter, uh, they're, they're redoing downtown Bothell. And, you know, there there's an area that they're going to be rebuilding, and, and it's like, you know, what do you want to go in there or whatever? And and Paisley goes, I want a McDonald's in there. And it's like, <laughs> you do realize that when I was a kid, there actually was a McDonald's right there. And they tore oh, she, it down to build this, and now they're going to tear it down again. That. She did not realize that, Of course that, she didn't realize that. It was decades you, after I, she was I, born. I bet you yelled at her. Did, don't you realize there was one there when I was a boy? But anyway, can I get to the point? So there were all these these weird things to play on. There were these little, uh, like, French fries. You know, those little, uh, you, you sit on them, they got this giant spring, and they go back and yes. forth. You, you hanging would, out with Mayor you'd, McCheese You'd ride there. the uh, the fries, and then they had uh-huh. the big spinny that was built like uh, Grimace, big Grimace. purple spinny. <laughs> and, yes, they had, a, they had a Mayor McCheese. Remember that guy? <laughs> mayor McCheese. He was the mayor of the McDonald's play place. And he had a head... That was a hamburger. His head was a hamburger. And he wore a hat on top of his hamburger head. And the the toy was like, you climbed up this ladder into Mayor McCheese's head. And then you could climb up a little higher and you could look outside his hat. I'm sure I've told this story before. So one day I go up into his hat and I stuck my head out of the hole in his hat. And I was looking around, and I don't know if you know anything about a uh, head, but you have ears, okay? Ears. Mm-hmm. So my head goes through the deal, and then I tried to pull it out, and I was stuck. I was stuck in Mayor McCheese's hat. Couldn't get my head out. Man, I was freaking out. Especially and my, when the hamburger creeped up behind you. That my, must have been parents are inside and uh i was like oh my god and then you know what i hear in the distance sirens Uh oh i thought they well there's only one place i could be going (laughs) me my head is stuck in mayor mccheese's hat they must be coming with the jaws of life or some welding machine or something 
Maybe they'll have to take my head off and put it back on like uh, Shibata. So I heard this coming, and man, pop my head back on through. Ears bleeding all over the place in the back. Oh. Still got a lump back here. Brutal. But anyway, the point is, there is a point. I was on the uh, I was on your on, head. I was dude. on the internet the other day. I don't even know why I was like searching for this, but I was searching for like old school McDonald's play places, and there's a guy that has a site. That's all about old school McDonald's play places. He's like gone back and he buys all of the old toys that he can find. And he's like built one in his yard or something. And it's like, it's a blast from the past, bro. If you're my age, you go and look at this. You're like, oh my God, I forgot all about that Hamburglar. What a freaking creep that guy was. The Hamburglar. Mm -hmm. It's like, what a horrible time to grow up. I don't even know how I'm still here. I look I at all this stuff like the kids play on nowadays, all this fun, happy stuff. There's happy faces and furry animals and everything. Dude, I was running around, running from the Hamburglar and spinning around in some big purple blob of goo. And Mayor McCheese tried to chop my ears off. What a horrible life. But anyway, you guys got to find that site. I'll, I'll see if I can find it because I sent it to my wife. You have the Peacock app, Granny. It tells me that I'm not on it anymore. Well, you better start logging in because I've been paying for it every month. I don't care anyway. I don't like it. Use Peacock or I'm going to stop paying for it. You can if you want to. Start from 1929. Who was president? Okay. Who was I'll... president when I was alive? That was Donald late. Trump. Some Shut up. Well, let me do it. Okay. <laughs> up till 1933, it was Herbert Hoover. Hmm. Herbert Hoover. Yeah, and he was uh, 50, 50 uh, he was our 31st president. <laughs> hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.